Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at this Bearcat 980 SSB CB radio that I just bought from Amazon. So I've been in and out of CB radio since I was 14 or 15 years old. Now recently I haven't done much with it. I've been focused more on ham radio and work to be honest. But a few weeks ago I was going through my collection of old CB radios, I have, I don't know, six or seven of them, and started to get kind of interested again. So all of my CB radios at this point are quite old. In fact, I think the newest one I own it was made in like 1990. <laughs> so I thought it was time to upgrade to something made in this century, which is where the Bearcat comes in. So what I think I'll do first is take it out of the box, we'll do a quick overview of the radio, and then I'll go through some of its features and functions. Then we'll put it on the air and test it out. Okay, so here's a look at everything that comes in the box. First, of course, is the radio itself. Here's a look at the microphone that they supplied with the radio. The power cord that was supplied has the standard CB radio connector for the radio end, and the other end is just bare. Here's a supplied bracket if you want to mount the radio in a car. There's also a metal mic clip. And here's all the hardware that you would need to mount the mobile bracket to the radio and to whatever you're putting the bracket into, a car or a shelf or something like that. And then last up is a microphone adapter cable. This would allow you to plug in a standard 4-pin CB microphone on this end and adapt it to the 6 pins that this radio uses. And then for documentation they supplied an owner's manual and a copy of the FCC rules for CB radio. Okay, so let's get it powered up and check out some of the features. So let's do an overview of the radio. So first up we'll take a look at the microphone that Unit N supplied with the radio. You can see it looks kind of flashy with the chrome grill and kind of chrome trim on there. And it is big, so if you had gloved hands or something like that you wouldn't have any trouble using it. But it does feel kind of light and maybe a little on the chintzy side. The cord actually feels pretty good. It's not too stiff or anything like that. It feels like decent quality wire. Just the microphone itself feels a little bit light. Now from the little bit of testing that I did with this microphone and based on some stuff I read online, there's sort of a baffle or windscreen inside the microphone that blocks some of the voice power from getting to the microphone element. A lot of people open these up and remove it right away. I haven't done that yet, but I probably will. So just taking a quick look at the back of the radio, you can see here we have a regular SO239 antenna jack. This over here is the standard 3-pin 12-volt power jack that you find on most CB radios these days. And then up here we have two 8-inch audio jacks. This one is for a public address speaker, and this one is for a regular external speaker. Okay, so let's take a look at all the radio's controls. First up over here is the on-off and volume control. So the inner ring of the volume control is the squelch control. So what this does is it masks the background noise and only activates the receiver when strong signals like that come through. Below the volume control is the microphone connector and as you can see this is a 6-pin configuration. Now as I mentioned earlier the radio does come with a 6-pin to 4-pin adapter if you want to use a 4-pin microphone on this radio. So looking at the main display, across the middle portion of it is the signal and RF meter. There's also an SWR function that we can select, and I'll show you that later. Up here above the signal meter are indicators for RX and TX, and below the SRF meter are some other indicators that light up when various modes of the radio are selected. So this, of course, is the main channel indicator, and then below the channel indicator is a frequency readout that matches the channel. And the column just to the left of the channel is the mode indicator. Right now the radio is in lower sideband mode. Moving to the right, we have a column of LEDs that light up red when these buttons are pushed. This, of course, is the main channel selector, but when pressed in, activates and controls the menu functions. We'll talk about that a little more later on in the video. Below the channel selector are the clarifier controls. The inner ring is the coarse clarifier and has a center detent to let you know when you're in the middle of the range. And then the inner control is the fine clarifier. So the first of the buttons over here is the talkback control. Activating this allows the transmitted audio to kind of feed back through the radio speaker so you can hear what you sound like. So to use the talkback control, you first have to set the level of the talkback that you want. So to set the talkback level, I'm going to press the button so the red indicator lights, and then I'll key the radio's microphone and turn the channel selector until I get the level of talkback that I want. 
you can see there's a number indicator and then the meter indicator also goes up as we turn it to the right. Level zero is completely off and 15 is the max. Once I have the level set where I want, I can tap the button to turn off the LED. And now whenever I transmit, I'll hear my voice through the radio speaker. Hello, test, one, two, three, four. So to turn the talk back completely off, I push the button, key the mic, and set the level to zero. So the RF gain control on this radio actually works more like an attenuator. Right now, and by default, the RF gain function is turned off. To turn it on, I'll short press the button, and you can see that this local indicator shows up in the display. To set the level of the RF gain, I'll push and hold the button, and then you can see that the local indicator flashes, there's a number over here, and you can see that the graph is partially lit up here. If I turn the channel indicator, you can see I can choose between one and five. So setting the RF gain to level five actually causes the radio to receive the strongest, and setting it to one causes it to receive the weakest. So in my case, I'm actually gonna set it to two for this demonstration. So I'll short press the button to exit setup mode. I'm gonna turn the volume up, and you should be able to see that the RF gain control is not currently active. Now you should be able to hear the static in the background and these digital signals coming through at their maximum. If I push the RF gain to activate it, you should be able to hear that the background noise has kind of gone down, and now the received signals are much weaker. The next function is the mic gain. So to set the mic gain, I push the button and then key the microphone and use the channel selector to select the level of mic gain that I want. Level one is the lowest or will produce the, the least amount of audio. And level four is the maximum and will produce the most amount of audio. So this button toggles the radio between normal CB mode, which it's in now, and weather receive mode. So as you can see, the radio is now receiving NOAA weather frequencies. Now you can use the channel selector to tune between the seven frequencies and find one that's active in your area. So long pressing the weather button will turn on weather alert mode. So what this does is it allows the radio to produce an alert tone and automatically switch to the weather frequencies when it receives a coded signal from one of the weather stations to alert you of impending dangerous weather like a tornado or some other type of event like that. So this button here changes the radio's mode between AM, upper sideband, and lower sideband. One thing to mention is that the ANL only works in AM mode. So the first press of the button turns the ANL on, second press turns the noise blanker on, third press turns them both on, fourth press turns them both off. This button also sort of has a hidden feature. Long pressing it will allow you to turn on and off the key beep. So far throughout this demo I've had it off, if I long press the button, you can see it's now on, it says beep on. And then anytime I push a button, the radio beeps, or even if I turn the channel. Personally, I find that kind of annoying, so I like to keep it off. This button here is a shortcut to bring you directly to channel 9, 19, or back to normal mode. So the first press brings us to channel 9, second to 19, third brings us back to normal mode. So the next button toggles between memory mode, scan mode, and normal mode. Right now, by default, the radio is in normal mode. So the first press of this button puts the radio into memory mode. So you can see here, the mem is flashing, and now I can only tune to channels that I have stored in memory. In my case, I've only got 19 and 38 in the memory bank. The second push of the button allows the radio to scan through all 40 channels. The third press of the button causes the radio to scan just the memory channels, in this case, 19 and 38. And then pressing the button a fourth time returns the radio to normal mode, but since it was in memory mode, it stops on one of the channels that was in memory, and you can see the mem indicator is lit solid to let you know that that channel is a memory channel. If I turn the channel control to any other channel, you can see that the mem indicator disappears. So one thing to mention about scan mode is that it works in conjunction with the squelch control. With the squelch all the way off like it is now, the radio won't scan. In order to get the radio to scan, I have to raise the squelch control until it blocks out the background noise. And then the radio will scan until it finds a channel with some activity on it. So one other thing to mention about memory mode is that when a channel is stored in memory, it only stores the channel number. It doesn't store the radio's mode. You can see if I turn between the memory channels, 
They both stay in LSB, even though normally I would use AM on channel 19. If I want to add a channel to the memory, all I have to do is tune to the channel that I want and press and hold the mem scan button. You can see that save appears below the channel and now the mem indicator is lit when I tune to that channel. If I want to remove this channel from the memory, I just simply press and hold this button again. You can see clear appears down here and the mem indicator is gone. The next button toggles the radio between normal CB mode, which we're in now, and the PA mode. So the last button over here toggles the radio between normal mode, calibration mode, and SWR mode. To use the SWR function on this radio, I first have to make sure the radio is in AM mode. Then I can push the SRF button to get the radio into calibration mode. I'll then key the microphone and set the bar graph with the channel control so that it's aligned to the calibration mark here. Once I have that set, I press the button again to go into SWR mode. You can see the meter changes, and if I key the radio, it will now measure the SWR. So you can see the radio indicates the SWR by the bar graph here and by this number right here. So right now I'm currently looking at a 1.6 or so SWR. And then to return to normal mode, I just push the button again. So it just occurred to me, I forgot to pull this little plastic protector screen off of here. Ah, that looks much better now. Okay, so let's take a look at the radio menu items. To access the menu, I'm gonna push in on the channel selector. Okay, so now we're at the top level of the menu items. And if I turn the channel selector, I can cycle through the top level menu items. The first item is day and night mode. The second item is color. Third is contrast. Fourth is brightness. Fifth is weather scan. Eighth is diagnostic mode and ninth is exit mode. And if I turn it one more time, I'm back to the first item. So the first item toggles the radio between day and night display mode. Right now the radio is in day mode. If I wanna change that, I can push in on the channel selector and now I can turn the channel selector to toggle between day and night mode. I'm gonna leave my radio on day mode and to select that, I'm gonna push in on the channel selector again. You can see when I do that, it actually exits menu mode. So I'm gonna push the channel selector again to get back into menu mode. And this time I'm gonna to go to the second menu item, which is color. So now I'll push in on the channel selector again, and we go into the second menu level, which chooses between setting the color for day mode or night mode. So in this case, I'm gonna to turn to night mode, push in on the channel selector, and now I can cycle through all the color choices that I have in the radio. For now, I'm gonna select the green. I'll push in on the channel selector again to pick it, and now it goes back up to the top level menu. Now if I move on to the next menu item for contrast, if I push in on the channel selector, you can see it's set up the same way. I can choose between day and night contrasts. This time I'm just gonna go into the day mode. Now I can adjust the contrast between 15, which is the maximum contrast, and zero, which is the minimum. I'm gonna leave mine on 15. I'll push in on the channel selector to get back to the top level. Now I'll adjust the brightness. And again, I'll pick day mode. And again, I can adjust between 15 at the max and one at the minimum. And again, I'm gonna leave it at the max. Now the next item in the menu is weather scan. If I push in on this, it just simply toggles between turning it on or off. I'm gonna leave mine on. Next item is diagnostic mode. If I push in on the channel selector, I have three choices. I can look at the voltage, RF output, or antenna test. Let's start with voltage. I'll push in on the channel selector, and you can see the radio reads 13.8 volts, and it says it passes. I can push the channel selector to get back to diagnostic mode, push in again, and then go to the RF out test. Now the radio is telling me to go push to talk. So if I key the mic, you can see the radio passes the RF output test. I'll push in on the channel selector again to get back to the top level, go back into diagnostic, and this time I'll go to the antenna test, push in on the channel selector, and again the radio wants me to key the mic, 
and again you can see it passes. So now I can push in on the channel selector to get back to the top level. And then the remaining menu option is the exit function. So I push in on that to get out of menu mode. So what I'll do now is switch over to my software defined receiver and I'll do some transmit tests with the Bearcat so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Testing the Bearcat 980 SSB in AM mode with the stock microphone. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Testing the Bearcat 980 SSB in AM mode with my old Turner desk mic. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Testing the Bearcat 980 SSB in upper sideband mode with the stock microphone. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Testing the Bearcat 980 SSB in upper sideband mode with the old Turner desk mic. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Testing the Bearcat 980 in lower sideband mode with the stock microphone. All, rec all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. Testing the Bearcat 980 SSB in lower sideband mode with the old Turner desk microphone. All squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares. So as expected, the audio on the stock microphone sounded a little bit muffled. The audio was a little bit better on my old beat up Turner microphone here, but maybe a little bit tinny. Either way, I think you heard from the video clip that the radio is transmitting and sounds about average for your typical CB radio. So having said that, you may have noticed that on upper sideband, the radio sounded like it was off frequency a little bit. And that's sort of to be expected for radios like this, especially one that's at this price range. The factory just isn't going to tune it as perfectly as we'd like it to be. Now most of the time it's really not going to be an issue for the radio to be a little bit off frequency on upper sideband since 99% of the sideband work on CB radio is lower sideband. Now of course CB radios all have clarifiers on them so usually if you're just working one other station it's not a big issue for your radio to be off frequency a little bit. If you're working multiple stations, it may be more of an issue because then everybody's got to tune their clarifier every time you get on the air because you're going to be off frequency compared to those other stations. So that may be something you want to consider if you're going to buy one of these radios for upper sideband. Now, when we switched over to lower sideband, the radio sounded like it was much closer to being on frequency, but maybe just a slight bit off. Okay, so now what I'll do is post some clips so you can hear what the receiver sounds like. The first clip will be a snippet from an AM conversation that I heard recently. And then after that, I'll post a snippet of me making contact with another couple of stations on sideband so you can hear what that sounds like. And you'll also hear their feedback on what they think the radio sounds like on their end. Yeah, how you guys doing? Uh, just checking out a radio here. How's it sound? Uh, sounds okay. Maybe a little, uh, a little weak on the, you know, it's kind of a narrow sounding radio, but it sounds okay. Okay. Yeah, this is a Bearcat 980 that I just picked up. I just was wondering if it was working okay. It's working. It just sounds sounds a little thin. That's all. Where are you guys located? I'm in South Windsor. 
Oh, okay. I'm over here in Tallinn. Okay, so that's pretty much going to wrap things up for my overview and demo of the Bearcat 980 SSB. If you want to learn more about this radio, check the link in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider taking a look at my Amazon store, which is also linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.